Hi, I'm Lisa Gonzalez, the Executive Director of Finance and Operations in the Marysville School District. This is a special episode of Budget Bites to talk about the family income forms and why they are so critically important. Family income forms are used to identify students who come from families with lower household incomes. Uh, it used to be that these were tied to the federal free and reduced meal forms, but now that we have universal feeding, which means that we provide meals for all students, the state needs to have a way to collect information in order to give us specific funding that's always been intended for low-income students. It's the only way we receive that state funding, these family income forms. We send them to all families at the beginning of the school year, and the deadline for us to get them back and have them entered into our computer system and uploaded to the state is Tuesday, October 31st at the end of the day, Halloween, which means we're going to have a lot of people putting in extra time to get all of these submitted next Tuesday. The challenge is that it helps us with funding for this current school year. That's why we're doing this push to get these forms in. We need the funds this year. So the information that is collected is not shared. It is not shared with staff. It is not publicly um, used to identify your child. It is confidential information that goes into our system that's uploaded to the state that qualifies us for additional funds to be able to support student needs across our district. Here are some of the examples. Uh, discounted fees, additional technology. Uh, you may have seen this in the weekly digest that was sent out. Here is a slide that you might want to go ahead and just press stop on and take a look at the money that comes in. LAP is learning assistance programs. It's for students that are not meeting academic standards. It's state money. The next column over you see is LAP HP. It's learning assistance program, high poverty. It's for students who are not meeting academic standards and who experience greater levels of poverty. And then we have Title I funds, and that is some funding that we get from the federal government for students that are low income. So you can see that across our district, this adds up to almost seven and a half million dollars. Stop for just one second and take a look at the school where your students attend. But let's see how this helps real schools. I've picked a handful of schools and I'm gonna let you know the amount of money they receive and what the money funds. Let's start with Marshall Elementary. You can see the amount of money that they receive in those three specific categories to the penny. It funds things like take home instructional reading materials, paraprofessional support for phonics and phonemic awareness. That's the very basics of making sure that students are able to understand how to read. Um, supplemental reading, targeted support for the most at-risk students in the school. Let's take a look at Schultes. Here's the funds that they receive. They have two teachers and they have two paraprofessionals that they fund from this money. They have school-wide literacy events, family training, teacher training. Let's take a look at Sunnyside. Sunnyside only receives one of these categories, which is why it's really important <clears throat> that we get this money um, for Sunnyside Elementary. Teacher training, staff support. If you've attended their attendance breakfast or snuggle up or read events, that's what the money funds. Total Middle School, they receive close to a little, actually a little over $8 million or $800,000 in after-school tutoring, one-on-one -on -one mentors, reading and math groups, summer programs, family engagement activities. Let's look at Pilchuck High School. A, a little over a million dollars. Algebra interventions, English intervention courses, parent engagement, teacher release time. So how else does it help students? When the forms are turned in, families can save money on things like athletic participation, advanced placement tests, ASB fees for their sites, running start and college bound programs, our state funding for free meals. 
and even discounts and no cost for college applications. So you can see that it's not just the money that we bring in for students, it's all these other things that help students qualify. Here are some things that you can do. Remind other parents to turn the forms in. And here's a really simple thing you can say. Hey, have you heard about the family income form? Our school needs them. And it brings in state money for important school programs. If you haven't done so, please turn it in. Sometimes you all have the best impact on other parents. Put it on neighborhood message boards, next door, Facebook. Uh, if you've got a PTA or if you've got a parent booster group, just send out the reminders. We need to have as many of these forms turned in by the end of the day on Monday so that we can get them into our computer system. If you turn them in on Tuesday of next week, that works too. We're going to have staff that's working in order to get those in. But the more lead time we can get for those forms, the better it is. So I hope this has been helpful. This is a really important task that we're asking you all to complete. Um, this is a special budget bite, but if you've got questions about anything in the future, please go ahead and send an email with your questions about finance, operations, anything you'd like to budgetbites at msd25.org.